Hello, hello, hello. Did you hear that? Of course you did. I'm talking and you're hearing me right now. But how exactly does hearing happen? Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology where we're making biology fun. Let's do it. First, there are sound waves generated by my vocal cords. It all starts with those sound waves. They travel through the air and they go to your ear. Ear? Ear? Get it? Man, that was corny. Okay, so those sound waves come in contact with this outer structure of your ear called the pinna. That pinna focuses the sound waves into your ear canal, which then come in contact with the eardrum. Or if you wanna sound smart, you can call it the tympanic membrane. Once that happens, the tympanic membrane vibrates back and forth. Sound waves carry energy. Have you ever been in front of a loud, bassy speaker? I mean, you feel the vibration. Well, that that's exactly what's happening to the tympanic membrane. It's vibrating. Now, on the other side of the tympanic membrane, we're in the middle ear. And in there, we have three bony ossicles. That's these three very tiny bones called the malleus, incus, and stapes. You may have heard them called the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. We're gonna stick with the more technical terms, malleus, incus, and stapes. Now, the malleus is connected to the eardrum on one side, and on the other side, it's connected to the incus. The incus is then connected to the stapes, and the stapes is connected on the other side to a structure called the oval window. And that's where we get connected to the inner ear, and that's where we find a very important structure, and it's called the cochlea. This structure is where we find the actual sensory receptors that will be responding to the sound and converting this into a signal that goes to the brain. But before we get there, let's take a step back and talk about these three bony ossicles. They're connected to each other in a very interesting way. Since we have these tiny bones, they're connected via some very tiny joints. And when one moves, it causes movement in the others. So when the tympanic membrane starts to vibrate, that's gonna cause the malleus to move back and forth, which is gonna cause the incus to move back and forth, which is then gonna cause the stapes to move back and forth. And all of this essentially takes the vibration from the tympanic membrane and causes the oval window to vibrate. It's a beautiful thing. Now I mentioned that on the other side of the oval window we have the cochlea and inside the cochlea is fluid. What do you think is gonna happen to the fluid in the cochlea if the oval window is vibrating? Well, you guessed it right. That's gonna cause the fluid in the cochlea to vibrate. Okay, so we've gotten all the way here and all we have is some vibrating fluid. What are we gonna do with that? And how does that result in you hearing me right now? Well, to understand that, we have to look at the cochlea in more detail. It kinda looks like a snail, right? Well, let's take the cochlea and kind of unwind this section here. We're gonna roll it out. So you can take a look at the structures that are inside the cochlea. A major structure that we see in the middle of this unwound cochlea is the basilar membrane. This membrane is very interesting. If we look closer by the oval window, you kind of see that it's kind of thin. And the farther away you get from the oval window, the thicker it gets. Now that we have the fluid in the cochlea vibrating, that's gonna cause the basilar membrane to also vibrate. But here's the thing, depending on the frequency of the sound, basically the pitch, that's gonna determine where exactly the membrane will vibrate. If it's a high pitch, a high frequency, that's not gonna have enough energy to vibrate the thicker parts of the basilar membrane. To vibrate the thicker parts, you're gonna need a lower frequency. It's like if you're in front of a huge speaker and there's a high-pitched sound coming from it, you don't feel it as much. But if there's some serious bass, man, you're gonna feel that thing real good because it has more energy. So what does that mean? Well, depending on the frequency of sound or the mix of frequencies, you're gonna get the basilar membrane vibrating in different ways, in different locations in the cochlea. Now here's where the detecting of the sound by the receptors actually happen. Along the basilar membrane, we have a number of structures. But within all the stuff we have there, there are sensory cells called hair cells that get stimulated 
and sends signals to the brain via the auditory nerve. The signals in the auditory nerve then travels to the auditory cortex, which is located in the temporal lobe of the brain. That's the region to the side right here. And that's where the brain will then interpret the sound and you actually hear. Now here's the key. The brain gets these signals from the auditory nerve and can tell where along the basilar membrane the vibrations are actually happening. And that's gonna give information about the frequency of sound. But it can also tell how much vibration is happening, which gives information about the loudness of the sound. And that amazing brain of yours is able to then perceive complex auditory information so that you can hear my voice, you can appreciate the complexities of sounds coming from an orchestra, and it's all because of how amazingly structured your brain and your ear actually are. That, my friends, is how you hear. And if that isn't just amazing to you, then I don't know, something's wrong, man. This stuff blows my mind. And if that was so fascinating that you want to learn more about hearing, check out this next video.